Hello, dear listeners, and welcome to our podcast, My Wife Hates Video Games. I'm your host, Travis Bone, more affectionately known as Finally He Sleeps Across the Interwebs. I'm a Gen X video game addict, beer enthusiast, and pop culture fanboy. Each episode, we'll talk movies, books, sci-fi, gaming, comics, tell some stories, laugh a little bit, and troll the world we're living in. Thanks for spending some time with me today. Now let's get down to business and see what's been going on since the last episode. Quick movie recap. We'll, we'll start with this. this is like, that's what I have written down. That's my first topic. And uh, then there's a list of movies, which you guys don't care what my topic list looks like. But anyway, the first movie uh, that I want to talk about is Tomorrow War. It's been sitting on Amazon, uh, Amazon Prime for months. And it's got Chris Pratt in it. And I look at Chris Pratt and, it, I mean, I love Guardians of the Galaxy. I've talked about it on, you know, past episodes. I absolutely love, 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 love Guardians of the Galaxy. I love James Gunn. So you, you put him involved in it, and it's fantastic. And Chris Pratt as Star Lord is epic. I mean, I love him. He's he's a fantastic character. And, you know, Chris Pratt, you go back to, like, Parks and Rec, and his characters, it's the same, he plays the same character in everything he does. You just throw a new name on it. And a lot of times, that doesn't bother me. Like, but it doesn't mean I like the person. And Chris Pratt just annoys the shit out of me as a person. I just, every time I see his smug-ass face, I just want to punch him. And it takes me a few minutes to get into it to where... I can look past that. And there's a lot of actors that really can't act for shit. But they play the same character every time. And I like that character. Even though I don't like him in real life. Like Tom Cruise, I I can watch anything with Tom Cruise in it almost. And I usually like what happens. I like where it goes. But I can't stand Tom Cruise. You know, Mel Gibson. God damn, that dude makes some great movies. But he is a total piece of shit. <laughs> there's no one on this. There's very few people on this planet are like, yeah, I like Mel Gibson. I could sit down and have a beer with him. No, no, you can't. Mel Gibson is a piece of shit. But I like his movies. Uh, you know, and then at the same time, there's like people who, it doesn't matter what they're in, they play the same character. You know, but I still like their movies. Steven Seagal. Steven Seagal plays Steven Seagal in everything that has Steven Seagal in it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if he's fat, mumbling Steven Seagal, or he's old, 1990s, skinny, Nico Steven Seagal from, like, Above the Law and that kind of shit. I like him. I don't care. I, it, it doesn't even bother me if it's, it. you know, it, everything's in shadow and it's it's this big, dumpy guy. And you know that every time there's an action scene, it's some guy in a fat suit doing all the work. And then it cuts back to Stephen Gunn. You know, and they have to subtitle in. Or there's there's actual Steven Seagal movies. If you get on, like, you know, Netflix or whatever, there's some Seagal movies that were made in Russia in the last 10 years where he's he mumbles so bad that they have to have someone else dub in English over Seagal. Like, it's not even him talking. It's someone else talking because we get that Steven Seagal in all those movies. But doesn't matter. I still like Steven Seagal. Not as a person, but I watch his action movies for whatever reason. But for some, there's there's just something about Chris Pratt that turns me off so much. And it's not even anything horrible. It's not like, you know, he's got like a basement full of, you know, Guatemalan kids or something. He's just an asshole. I just don't like him. <laughs> but I finally got around to watching Tomorrow War, despite the fact that it had smug ass Chris Pratt. And god damn that movie was fantastic. And it it sounded so good at my house, so I had to crank the volume up. Plus we have Matrix coming out in a couple of weeks. Uh, Matrix, was it Resurrections, I think, which has put Keanu back in the limelight. Everybody's talking about Keanu. God, I love... See, Keanu Reeves plays Keanu Reeves in everything he's playing, whether it's uh, Bill and Ted or John Wick. It's just... 
It's just a different version of the same person. You know, whoa. And then he shoots you in the head. That's Keanu Reeves. It doesn't matter. I love him in everything he's ever. I don't remember a single Kanunu movie that I didn't fall in love with. I love him in everything. He's just, he's just a genuine. I can't say enough good things about him. And I, the John Wick series is is way up on the top of my list of movies and franchises. I just, I just everything. Matrix is coming back. I rewatched all the originals with my daughter during, you know, last. I think it was during the summer, and the first one still holds up. The first one still holds up. Plot, uh, everything except for a few of the times the CGI goes in and it shows like Kanunu, uh, like bending over backwards and his body turns into rubber. It looks like an action figure. The the old CGI from those dates. That's about the only time that it's uh, that it it looks very dated. But for the most part, that movie holds up. Then you get into the second one and the third one, and there are more holes in those movies than like a giant block of forty year old Swiss cheese. You know, that's a little bit rough, but we let it go because it's the Matrix, and we we especially for me at my age, I grew up with that. Uh, that was like the, the Jack Reacher series by. Lee Child, I've went through that entire book series at least five or six times and reread them over and over again. If you're familiar with Jack Reacher at all, the series is about this retired military uh, police officer, investigator, special, special units investigator who grew up outside of the United States on army bases. And he's just this big brute of a guy. And he he gets discharged from the army after spending all these years as an investigator. He's a major in the army. And when he finally retires, he comes to the United States for the first time. He had never been to the U S before, even though he was a citizen because he had been born abroad and he has all of this money because of, he worked all those years, but he had nothing to spend it on. So he has like a stockpile of cash, but, no home and no worldly possessions. He has nothing and he just roams the countryside hitchhiking across the country just to see the his there's lines in the books where he always says, um, when he explains it to somebody what he's doing, he's like, I'm I just want to see the entire country that I've spent my whole life, you know, trying to protect. So he just hitchhikes from place to place for no reason. And, and just gets into situations. Love the books. They're they're so over the top. He's so violent, and he just doesn't care. And he always gets away with it. And you, you read the book, and you're like, there's a part of your brain that's like, this isn't this isn't right. This guy is just killing people and maiming them, and you know, twisting knees the wrong way. That guy's never gonna walk right again. And he's just like a third level henchman. But you just you let that stuff go because it is what it is. But morally, the books, woo, they're they're a bit out there. It doesn't matter. I love them anyway. It's just like it's just an action book, like personal vice. It, it, the Jack Reacher series. They released two movies uh, in the series, and they both had Tom Cruise. And we've already discussed earlier that I will watch anything that has Tom Cruise in it, despite the fact that he's this crazy little creepo in real life. But in the movies, okay, so. Jack Reacher's supposed to be like six foot eight, 280 pounds. He's just this monstrous guy. He lives in hotel rooms and he never, he doesn't have an, he doesn't have a suitcase or anything. He just, the only thing he has is a passport, a debit card, and a toothbrush. That's it. That's all he carries with him. Those three things. And he'll get cash out when he needs it. And he brushes his teeth. And when his clothes get dirty, he buys new clothes. That's, that's the way this guy lives. So, you know, they, they talk about how he's just this scary looking guy, not only because he's so big, but because he's just, he's like Bobo from the Bigfoot series, but, you know, he's hitchhiking across the country. Then they put Tom Cruise in him in the movies, who's like five foot one with like four inch platform shoes. I, I, I swear to God, he's like, he's the white version of Kevin Hart, but no one talks about it because he's, you know, he, he tries to be as, 
big as he can be. And there's nothing about him. Anybody who loved the book series, there's nothing. When they, when they said they were making a movie, and I was like, yes. Like, Tom Cruise is playing him. And I'm like, no. How? How is that going to work? It's okay, but they miss that entire portion of him being huge. The movies are okay, but that's, uh, you know. And the second one had Kobe Smulders in it, which, I mean, come on. Wow. Uh, it, you know, it makes sense, but um, they're going to make a series. They're, I mean, they're not going to. They have made a series that is going to be on Amazon. It starts in 2022. It is going to be epic because it goes... 